Hello everyone. This is Robin Armbrecht with Really Robin Stamps. You are joining me today, maybe live, if you're catching me live. It's March 25th, 2021. I can't believe March is already almost over. Or you may be catching me later, and either way, thank you so much for joining me and taking some time to play in my stamp room with me today. So we are going to be making a fun fold card today that's called a corner tuck fold. And let me show you what's on my table, and we'll get started. All right, look at these pretty colors we're going to play with today. All right. Hi, Bonnie. So happy to see your name pop up. All right. Let me quickly pull up on my um, iPad so I can see your comments. I gotta find my glasses so I can see. Oh, it's hard to get old. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you everybody for joining me today. All right. All right, so we are going to make a corner tuck fun fold card today. But first, before we do that, I have to show you, I've gotten so um, many cards in the mail lately and I wanted to just show you and share with you some of the creations that you guys are making. First and foremost, I have to show you this gorgeous little tote that my friend Pat made. She took last week's um, paper crafting play date tutorial and she put it to work immediately and made a bunch of these adorable tote bags um, for um, our little stamping group that we have. Isn't this so cute? I wish I could show you what was on the inside because the inside was just delightful too, but I ate it all. <laughs> I gobbled it right up. She put a little little chocolates in there and some trail mix and a little bottle of wine and it was just the most amazing little gift. So thank you, Pat. Um, and thank you for trying out that tutorial. I love this. I love, love, love this. All right, I got a card in the mail from my friend Nancy and she used this great um, little embossing folder, I think. I'm not exactly sure, it's so beautiful. Um, looks like maybe she inked the embossing folder and made this gorgeous little card. Thank you, Nancy. And then this is from a demonstrator friend, Stacy. She did the, <laughs> she did my little rip and flip um, technique card that was my very first paper crafting play date ever. So, um, Stacy, thank you so much for sending me that card. I really love it. And then this one is from my friend Cindy. And um, she sent me a little thank you card and then she said she was using up all her little scraps and strips and she was just creating some simple little note cards and I love that. I love using up all those pieces. This one is from Lynn and she used the Painted Poppies uh, gorgeous, gorgeous stamp set and did some coloring. There's so many beautiful elements in this card. I love that. So cute. Thank you, Lynn. And then my friend Sherry, she's like a card making machine. She lives in Canada um, and she has sent me over the course of the last six weeks a couple of um, awesome cards. One for St. Patrick's Day and um, so cute. This is from Stampin' Up. I don't think the gnomes were from a Stampin' Up set, but I just think this is so adorable. And then she sent me this great um, card with the Wild Rose um, stamp set. So awesome, awesome. And then lastly, I have a card from a demonstrator friend, Rachel. And she had made this card on her, um, I guess it was a Facebook post that she posted. And I just thought, I, I love the clean and simple, cute, quick little cards. They just make me so happy. And um, I had commented that I just thought it was adorable. And so she sent it to me. How sweet is that? And I love that idea. I'm gonna have to do that um, for you guys too, because I have so many cards. Um, now that I've been doing these live videos, I have way too many cards in my in my life. So thank you again for the wonderful um, happiness in the mail. 
All right, look at all these fun colors we're gonna start with today. Let me move them over here and show you what we're going to make. So this is a quick and easy, but fun fold, all right? And what I love about it is that this is really all you need the, as far as pieces, this is all you need to put this together. Hey, Pat. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you so much for watching. So you need a piece of um, cardstock that's four and a quarter by 11 inches. And then you need a piece of um, double-sided pattern paper, designer series paper, that is two inches by six inches. And then you need two pieces um, that are, that. I'm using a neutral cardstock, basic white, but you could um, choose to use a colored piece of cardstock as well. One's for the inside, one's for the outside, and these are both measuring three by four. All right, so let me show you this super, super quick little card template. So I'm going to bring in the paper cutter. Might have to back this up just a little bit. There we go, I wanna see all that paper cutter. Hey, Judy. All right, so here is my four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of paper. And what I'm gonna do is turn it this way. And I'm going to cut off three and a quarter inches. All right, so three and a quarter. So that's going to give me a piece that is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then I'm going to take the remaining piece and I'm going to score it at five and a half inches. All right, so this is going to be the card base. And then this is going to be a little flap on the card front. All right, then before I put my paper cutter away, we're going to take the piece that is two inches by six inches and we're going to cut it at four inches. And that will leave you with a four by two and then this two inch square. And then we're going to take the two inch square and we're going to cut that diagonally to get two triangles. Like that. All right, now I can put the paper cutter away. All right, so here's how this goes together. This is going to be the card front here. And then one of these triangles is going to go on to the corner and it's gonna create a little pocket that the card front is going to tuck into. All right, so let's put this together. I think I might try it on this side. I made it one way earlier and I think I'm going to try with the other side of the paper. So this is the Ice Cream Corner Designer Series paper. I can barely choose between these two sides because the ice cream cones are so cute. But also this little waffle cone pattern is so cute. So my card base is Pear Pizzazz. And then um, I'm using basic white, and then I have just a little piece of pool party that I'm gonna add my greeting on. So I'm going to make the rest of the card front here by putting this focal point onto the flap. So you only wanna put adhesive on the part of the focal point that's going to be over this flap so that it doesn't stick to the inside of your card. And basically you can get away with just doing like three strips of some kind of double-sided adhesive or snail that if you still have snail or the seal, um, or you can do a couple pieces of big, um, if you've got regular like scotch double-sided tape, maybe a couple. So you just wanna put adhesive right on this part right here. Center this piece on the front of the card like that. All right, let's go ahead and put one of these inside pieces in. We'll get rid of some of these pieces here. So I want this inside piece, this is where the inside greeting is going to be. I want that to be right underneath this. So I'm just going to use, um, here's my adhesive, so it's sticky side up here right now. I'm just using this as a guide to so that I'll know where it needs to be 
and then I'm just going to close that like that and then adjust it. It looks pretty straight so I'm just adjusting that. That way it's completely hidden. All right and then we're going to put a pocket on here so you can put it on either side. I'm going to go ahead and put it down here. So to make the little triangle pocket you only want to put adhesive you know on this edge or on these corners. You can use the liquid glue that works really well or you can use glue dots. I'm going to use glue dots. Again, I love this pattern because you can get away with just using a half sheet of cardstock, four and a half by 11, and then a piece of designer series paper that's two inches by six inches, and then two other um, neutral pieces that are three inches by four inches. All right, so we're gonna not let this other little square go to waste here. And I'm gonna put some adhesive. This isn't gonna be a pocket, it's just going to kind of make the inside match with that pocket. All right, so there's our pocket. So that's basically how the card goes together, but let's make the focal point, okay? So here we're gonna need to bring in our stamp set. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the Sweet Ice Cream Stamp Set. And we're gonna stamp a cone to put on the front. Let me get the pieces here. All right, so I'm going to make a couple scoops of ice cream and one is going to be one of the coordinating colors to this paper, which is Pool Party, and one is going to be green. So let's do the Pool Party one first. Now, if I wanna make this more interesting, let me just show you. So here's pool party. This um, design of the stamp image already has texture in it. So you're going to get this beautiful little design right here. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of add a couple colors by doing um, an old technique called rock and roll, where you just kind of, after you ink in one color, so I inked in the pool party. Now I'm going to take the Bermuda Bay. I'm just going to very lightly roll my image you end up getting ink on the on your block but you just kind of roll it and you just kind of touch the sides like that and then you can get a, just a little bit extra color on there so I kind of didn't didn't hit it all the way around but that's okay let's cut out this one first cut that guy off So let's see, pool party ice cream would be like what flavor? Not bubble gum. Don't say bubble gum. That's like the worst ice cream flavor ever, I think. All right, now let's do one in purple, um, not purple, in um, green, because that'll be our mint ice cream. So I'm going to use soft sea foam, and then I'm going to use the rock and roll technique with pear pizzazz. Hello, Karen. Thanks for joining me. All right, so I stamped it first in soft sea foam, and then I'm going to hold it like this so you can see. I'm just going to rock the edges, kind of roll around like this, and it's going to add that darker color just around the edges like that. So there is our soft sea, sea foam and pear pizzazz and we'll punch that guy out. As long as we're getting ice cream today, we're gonna get two scoops. All right, let's make the cone. So I'll take my greens away and bring in the cinnamon cider. That is gonna be the cone. Stamp that there. And then there's this great little piece in this stamp set that looks like waffle cone. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that in early espresso. 
to make the cone and then we will punch this guy out. Okay, so there are our cone shapes and I think that we need some sprinkles and they're gonna be chocolate. So we're gonna put some chocolate sprinkles on the ice cream. All right, so let's build the cone and then we're gonna put the card front together. Ooh, Elaine says, blue raspberry, absolutely. That is my favorite icy color, icy flavor, not color, ever. I love blue raspberry. I don't know that I've had it in ice cream though. Wouldn't that be fun? I would also probably enjoy blueberry ice cream. All right, we're just gonna stack those and I just use some liquid glue to put those together and then I'm gonna just put my dimensionals on there to get ready to pop that up on the focal point. Okay, so really the focal point is gonna take us the longest. All right, so that's gonna go on here and um, I just want to show you another little, um, I guess it's a technique, tip, something like that. When um, sometimes I, there's too much white space and, I'm, and I just want a background, I don't want to use background paper, I want to keep it simple. Something that I like to do is just kind of use um, greeting stamp sets and just create my own little background. So I'm going to take the treat yourself and I'm going to use... Um, Actually, I'm gonna use pear pizzazz. And I just take the greeting and then I just keep stamping it until it runs out of ink. And then I'll stamp it again around my background. And it just creates a nice little word background. So every time that you stamp it, kind of full strength, you wanna make sure that you're in a different spot so that those look uneven. And then you can kind of go back when you're all done and just add some going off the edges so that you've kind of got this great little background. So I'm gonna use this treat yourself as the main greeting on the front of this card, but I'm gonna put it on a tag in the early espresso, but it's kind of nice sometimes to just repeat that same greeting on your background. So let's make this a little flag. This is pool party cardstock. And then we'll put this all together. Nice. Now, if you want this to pop, you want this to pop even more, something you can do once you've put your um, words on the background is just go ahead and use a sponge and kind of give the background just a little bit of color. So I'm just using the blending brush with the pear pizzazz. So now when I do that, that the little white edges on that are going to pop out even more because I've got this subtle background on there. So if you sometimes look at your card and you're like, why is there so much? Sometimes you want the white and then sometimes you're like, there's so much white. What can I do? So that's a little, little tip is to just use your whatever greeting you're going to be using um, for the front. Just kind of use it as a background as well. Okay, so we're ready to pop this up. Ah, Lisa said blue raspberry too. Have you guys actually had blue raspberry in an ice cream flavor? That's my question, because if that's that, that exists, then I am all in on that. I'm going to make this just a little bit shorter because I want it to stick a little bit more. I just want it to tuck underneath the cone like that. Okay, perfect. 
All right, so just to finish this up, I'm gonna take some of the little hearts from the resin hearts and add a couple little hearts onto the greeting. Because you're sending some love here, you want somebody to treat themselves. I might have to have ice cream later. Okay, so here is a corner tuck fold card. Super simple. Let me close all these ink pads before I get ink where I don't want it to be. I love it when I um, coordinate with a piece of designer series paper and it requires me to pull out six ink pads at one time. It's like, whoo, so exciting. All right, so now for the inside. We're going to just stamp the happy birthday on the inside. I spoke too soon, I put that one away. Take out the early espresso and we'll put the happy birthday on the inside. Oh, Lisa, yes, you are. You have Friday thoughts. She says, no, but blue raspberry vodka lemonade. Hmm, can that come in an ice cream flavor? Okay, so here is the quick and simple corner tuck fold. So let me show you a couple else that I did. Now here is um, the first version I made of this and I just used the other side of the designer series paper here. Um, and I used pool party for my background. All right, now here is one that I created with the hydrangea stamp set. And I used one of the other greetings that comes in that stamp set so that you would get kind of a double message. So you are capable of amazing things to an incredible woman. The world is better because of you. So this one is a vertical um, card as opposed to the horizontal cards here. So you can really, you can make this work um, in any direction. Here is one with the art gallery bundle. So it says you are lovely in the background, but I'm thinking of you in the front. Like that. And then here is one with the well-suited um, designer series paper. And handsomely suited is the name of the stamp set. So kind of made a masculine version of this card for a birthday card. And then I made one with the um, butterfly bijou paper to make a really quick little butterfly corner tuck fold. So there is the quick and easy version of the corner tuck card, but we're gonna step it up too. But before we do that, so I used this um, ice cream corner Sweet ice cream, sweet, I guess it's called, ice cream corner designer series paper first. And it is on back order right now. And there's a, there's a bunch of things on back order right now. And I just wanna tell you that Stampin' Up! has um, just said that they, you know, they've ordered stuff and they're just having trouble getting it to them. There's a lot of shipping issues um, right now. So um, be patient. All of those things will come in if you have ordered them. Also, this week, we were um, given the opportunity to look at the PDF of the brand new catalog that starts May 4th, and then we also were released the Last Chance Products um, list, and so I sent that in an email. If you're one of my um, customers, you've got this for you, but if you have any questions about anything that is retiring or not retiring, just go ahead and text me or ask me or email me. Um, so I can let you um, answer your question because sometimes it's confusing. So for example, here's what's confusing. Let me just pull this out. So here is the um, 
January to June mini catalog and we've got the sweet ice cream bundle so you can get it right now as a bundle with the stamp set and the punch and remember every time you um, buy something that's bundled you get 10% off of it all right so when the new annual catalog comes out some of the things that have been in past mini catalogs transfer over and are available for a longer time period by going into the new annual large catalog okay and these two items are both moving into the annual catalog starting may 1st all right um they're going to continue to be available as a bundle through the end of june because they're in this book all right when um when they go into the new annual catalog anything that's been bundled in the past will no longer be bundled they're only bundled for their first debut basically they get bundled for the time period that they're in one catalog whether it's six months or a year but then if they continue to stick around you know stampin up bundles other things so you can save 10 percent on new things so I tell you this because even though this is on back order right now, let's just say you wanted something that's currently bundled, you want to make sure you get that before it may or may not transfer into the new catalog because it won't be 10% um, off in the new catalog, if that makes sense. Also, this paper does not continue into the new um, annual catalog, so you will only have one opportunity until this, this particular catalog ends in June to get the coordinating paper. I hope that makes sense. Um, if not, just ask. Okay, so let's step it up. I'll put these to the side. So I was thinking this would be a great card to also um, use my triangle stamps and my triangle stitch dies on. So instead of creating my own little, you know, pocket, I can use one of my stitch dies to create the pocket and kind of step it up. So if I want to spend a little bit more time making a card and add a little more colors to it, then I, um, I have a slightly different version of this pattern to show you. All right, so I am going to make a card using the Timeless Tulips stamp set because it's spring and those tulips are starting to come up thinking about <clears throat> thinking about blooming here in the next month or so. So there is one of the corner um, stitched triangles that makes a perfect little stitched um, triangle. So why, why would we not want to just step it up a little bit and use those stitched triangles? So let me pull out my stamps so I can make this card. All right, so for this version, I adjusted the flap. And so instead of cutting this off, <clears throat> cutting off three and a fourth here, I just cut off three. So this, this particular flap is a little bit, it's like a quarter of an inch difference. All right, it's just, Another way you can um, another way you can design this card the same way. So and instead of using this piece like I did for these cards, where I just took the piece that I cut off and I used that as the um, the backing place for the focal point image. Instead of doing that, I just tucked that back into my stash and I used a different color. All right, because we're, again we're stepping it up. So let me put this one together. I'm gonna to use some um, designer series paper that's in the Poppy Parade. And then we'll go ahead and put the Daffodil Delight piece on. Again, I'm only gonna put adhesive where that is going to sit on top of the card front, this little card front flap. And then we're gonna put the one that goes on the inside on. Next, I'm gonna use this as a guide so that I know it'll be right underneath 
when I open or when the card is closed, you won't see that. So I use that as a guide and just kind of adjust it if I need to and then press that down like that. And then let's put the corner on. I'm going to use glue dots again. So these um, stitched triangles and the um, right triangle stamps that they are on the retired list. So they will be retiring at the end of April. So isn't that cute? Just the little stitching on there just kind of steps it up so nicely. It's going to look so cute. All right, so we are going to make a tulip card here. It's going to be a vertical card. I'm going to give you a little tip here. So um, when you use the tulip set with the tulip builder punch, just like the ice cream cone, it stamps out the flower and then this kind of leaf shape at the same time. So if you wanna make multiple cards where you're having, having to make more than one, um, it's a good idea if you just go ahead and use the punched out image as a guide. Um, so what I did was I punched this out first and then I set my stamps into the space where the punch is gonna go and I just made sure they were all lined up. And then I took my block and picked them up at the same time. So now I know when I stamp the flower and the leaf, it's gonna stamp in the exact spot that I need it to in, you know, in order to punch it out at the same time. So it kind of saves paper, saves a little bit of time. And they're still spaced well enough that you can um, you can ink them at the same time without much difficulty. So I'm going to bring back pear pizzazz again because that's the leaf color. So I'm just going to ink up the leaf in the green. I'm going to grab that fuzz off of there. And then I'm going to ink up the tulip in the poppy color and stamp them. And then when I go to use the punch, they're perfectly lined up for the punch. So I'm gonna pop that up, but I think I'm gonna create a little tulip scene on this card here. So I'm going to use the smaller tulips. Maybe, what did I do with them? Oh, they're there. Okay. So I kind of did the exact same thing that I just showed you. I took these stamps um, individually and I just kind of laid them first, knowing that I wanted to put this larger tulip up here in the stem like that. Kind of, I knew that I wanted to maybe put these down in this corner. So I laid them onto my card front first, picked it up with my block, um, and now they're going to stamp over and over again in the same exact spot. Um, and the same kind of orientation that I want them to be in. So I'm gonna do that rock and roll technique again with Daffodil Delight and Bumblebee. So I'm gonna ink them both in Daffodil Delight and then in the Bumblebee on just this kind of medium sized tulip, I'm just gonna roll it just a little bit around the edges in the Bumblebee. So I just got a little bit of the Bumblebee around the edge. And then I'm going to stamp those over here. I did the same thing with the stems. I went ahead and laid them down first onto where the flowers were gonna line up and then picked up the images with my um, block so that I could stamp them over and over again and then they're perfectly lined up. So um, if you're making one card, you don't need to do that, but if you're going to make multiple cards, which I always suggest that people, if you're gonna go ahead and make one, go ahead and do a couple because you've already got everything out. Okay, I'm not sure why I put the green away. We're well, not done with that yet. Same with the leaves. I did the same thing with the leaves. I, I kind of laid them onto my stems once I did the stems to figure out where I wanted those to be. 
and then picked them up with my block. Okay, now we're done with the green. All right, so I already stamped the stem and we have to cut him out. I just want them to look a little bit more, have a little bit more dimension. I'm not gonna pop the stem up, but I want it to have a little more dimension on the card front. This um, poppy parade and the daffodil today are making me very happy. They're just so bright and cheery. My daffodils also um, bloomed this week. Have you guys been seeing some spring flowers in your yards? All right, so we're gonna attach this to the front like that. All right, I'm gonna put the stem down first. Just using liquid glue. And then I'll trim off the extra part of the stem that sticks over. And let's pop up the tulip. I'm going to let it hang over um, the edge a little bit because that'll look interesting. And same with the um, with the leaf. Where do I want this guy to go? Oh, I want it to be over here. I'm going to use a smaller um, a smaller dimensional to pop that guy up right there on the edge. All right, so when we go to put this on our card front, there we go. Isn't that pretty? All right, so this stamp set has a lot of great greetings in here. It's got um, get well and birthday and hello and Mother's Day. So it's got a whole bunch of awesome, awesome things in it. So I'm going to do a, what am I going to do? There it is. I'm going to do a birthday card. I'll bring in the black. My favorite spring flower is actually a crocus because I just love how they come up when it's so darn cold out still and they're purple and they're just, they only last for a little bit. They're just so precious. And then right after that, you get to see the, the daffodils and it's like they just have such perfect timing. I love how that works out. And then shortly after that, you get the tulips and it's just so fun. All right, so I'm gonna put the greeting in the middle like that. Tuck that in. How cute is that? So if you wanna think of something else you can do to step this up, um, one thing would be to just add um, a little more dimension to add the backgrounds, but we're also gonna add some ribbon and we'll just decorate the little pocket with some Daffodil Delight ruched ribbon and we'll add that right there with a glue dot okay let's see last thing we're going to add a little bit of sparkle we're going to use the elegant faceted gems they have this cute little um they look like um, how you take the fork on a peanut butter cookie that you make and you make those little hash marks on the top of a cookie. So I'm gonna add a couple of those, one large and one small, and just give a little bit of sparkle to the front. All right, the only thing left to do is to stamp an inside greeting. And I'm going to use
Just wanted to send some happy thoughts your way. Now this, I just, whoops. I just realized today that um, this was a stamp set I need to look up to see if it's gonna be in the new catalog because it's one of my new favorites. Which of course I can't find right at this exact moment to show you, but it's um, in the mini catalog. I'm so sorry. This one, Happy Thoughts. So I need to see if that one's going to be in the new book because it's one of my new all-time favorite greeting stamp sets. So let's see, what are we gonna do here? We are going to just pull that out and we are going to do another one, because we can. All right. So another thing you can do to step this up is to make um, one of the inside pockets be a gift card holder. There we go. There. So let me show you how that would work. So here is one that I stepped up as well. I didn't use the stitch triangles. I just went ahead and used um, the designer series paper. I thought this would be a great wedding card. And then I put the opposite or the other half of the triangle over here and just made that a pocket for a gift card. So you've got space there for that. So putting a gift card on this flap only works if you use if you give it the um, you use kind of the second template that I that I just shared with you instead of the first one. And let me show you why. So here's the first quick and easy version. So this is this could be a pocket, except that by keeping this middle not the middle, by keeping this flap kind of um, more narrow by a quarter of an inch, it's really, there's really not enough room to put the card into a pocket. Um, you could move this piece over here and you could insert the card this way. Um, it just won't, you know, it'll just be a little bit more difficult to bend into the flap. So there's lots of, lots of little um, different ways you can do this, but I love, I love using the other half of the triangle and making that into a gift card holder. And then here is one um, where I also used the stitch triangle and then one of the um, pierced blooms, a bunch of those little flowers to create a, a happy little birthday card. You could use the stitch triangle over here obviously, and put a gift card in there as well. Or some money, whatever you wanna do. Okay, so what do you guys think about that? Which one is your favorite today? Let me put some more of these out here. So um, don't forget in March, um, ordering special from me personally in March. If you spend $40, I'm going to get you a free blending brush. Um, and also if you buy the Butterfly Brilliance bundle, you're going to get some of the paper for free. I have a couple packs of that, even though you can't order that anymore. Um, I will give you um, one of each of the sheets. So there we go. Here is the corner tuck fold card in two different um, styles. One is quick and easy and one is stepped up a little bit. I hope that you enjoyed this um, class today, and I look forward to seeing your creations as always. Thank you so much.